Corona pandemic has been raging for the last one and a half years now. Things seem hopeless, but we know so much more about the virus now. So much more about what happens and what are the implications to the human body from the infection. And that is where we have hope. We also have a vaccine now. Several types are available, but the current surge has been large. And to save yourself from the devastating consequences of an infection, the understanding of the disease is very useful. The coronavirus lodges in the throat and enters these cells in our pharynx, as we call it medically, the throat, and it becomes a part of this cell. Now, this is something which most people do not understand. It becomes a part of the cell because it overcomes the cell metabolism to its own advantage and uses the cell to multiply and make its own replicas. So within a short span of one or two days, you have millions of viruses within the cells that are infected. And once this invasion has happened into the cells and the numbers have multiplied, we have the body recognizing there is an invasion. The body then fights. Body fights by producing what are known as antibodies, which recognizes that foreign virus and attacks it and kills it. That's the normal process. All viruses, all viruses that infect our body are eliminated. They are not eliminated by drugs. They are eliminated by your own body's immune system producing antibodies and attacking and killing the viruses. This is true for your common cold. It is true for a lot of other viral illnesses. Usually it's about the fourth, fifth day when the antibodies are sufficient in number, the viruses are in large number and there's a fight between the two. And in this fight, there are what are known as chemicals released into the bloodstream. These are known as cytokines. And these chemicals cause the body to have a higher temperature. They have fever, body to have myalgia, body aches. If it is a throat infection, they have sore throat because the cells there in the throat have the maximum number of viruses. It causes a little cough from that irritation there. So these are consequences of the virus being there in the body in large numbers and the fight going on. The incubation period for the virus, which means from the entry of the virus to the first symptom is on an average about five days plus minus two days. But today, in this surge of viruses, no one knows where they got the infection from. In the past surge that happened, a lot of people knew. They went to a wedding, they went to an engagement, they went to a party, they went somewhere. They got it from there. But in this surge, no one knows where they got it from. So, you wouldn't be able to calculate the incubation period. So this incubation period, you keep it aside, but look at the first symptom that happened. And the first symptom that happened may be sore throat, irritation in the throat, cough, fever, body ache, headache. Occasionally, loose motions also. But any or all of these are possible. And this is something which you must keep in mind as the first day of your infection producing symptom, the day one of your symptom. A lot of people, when you ask them, what is your first symptom, they will usually remark what troubled them the most. It may be the body ache troubled them the most. They'll say, no, this was on that particular day, on uh, last week. No, you have to be precise here. Because a day or two calculation error can lead to a difference between your being happily up and about and your being on a ventilator. So it's important for you to get the precise dates. Once that has happened, the sore throat may persist, the fever may go little high, the second day fever is there, third day fever is there. Usually by fourth day fever comes down, comes to 99, maybe 98.4 and that's your normal body temperature. In 80% of cases, this is the end result of the whole infection. 80% of people with the virus infection have only minor symptoms which settle in 3-4 days time and they are happily moving around. However, the disease in 10 to 15 percent or maybe 20 percent takes a dangerous turn and what is the dangerous turn and what happens? The fever had settled, it comes back or fever was there, 
it becomes a higher degree of fever. Cough was there, then you have a <coughs> deep hacking cough. Nothing comes out, no phlegm comes out. It's a deep hacking cough. So three key symptoms that tell you, warn you that the disease is going to a dangerous turn or fever that becomes higher grade than what it was before or if there is no fever, new fever, usually more than 100 degree Fahrenheit that comes up. Second, a chest congestion or a difficulty in your inspiration expiration process. And the third is a deep kind of a cough which makes it difficult for you even when you lie down. This second dangerous turn, we have to understand, this is not because of the virus. Lot of people think the virus has caused a pneumonia and that is the biggest mistake which happened in the early understanding of the disease. The x-ray picture looks like a pneumonia until in Italy they did a post-mortem and they found that it was not pneumonia, it is actually blood clotting in the veins. It is only research that helped us understand this process and that research has guided us into understanding the pathology and now we know what we do once this happens. This is done by understanding the disease caused by the second dangerous phase of the virus infection. The virus is recognized as a foreign body by the human immune system. How is this recognition happening? It is a special spike protein on the surface of the virus which is recognized by the antibodies. So, it's like a unique ID for a particular person. However, there are some cells which have some proteins which are similar in appearance and structure to the virus spike protein. This structure is specifically seen in the blood vessels within your lungs. It is also seen in the intestine, that's why you have loose motion. It is also seen in the liver and in some of the kidneys. In the lungs, the body antibodies, which is supposed to only attack the foreign viruses, recognizes the similar ID on these uh, cells and attacks them. Once it attacks them, those cells get damaged. When the cells are damaged, you have a situation here where the normal smoothness of your blood vessels interior that is lost. The cells lining the wall of the blood vessels have become rough. Cells within the blood start sticking there and it soon forms a clot and it clogs the passage of the blood vessel and no more blood can pass. So if this happens in the lungs, the normal exchange of oxygen that happens between the air and your blood in the alveoli of your lung, that is not going to happen. No blood flow, no oxygenation. No oxygenation, your saturation of oxygen in your blood keeps going down. Till a stage comes, you become breathless and you have problem in breathing and depending on the severity of damage to the lungs, you have difficulty. So the pathology is not by the virus persisting in your lungs, no. It is because of body's reaction to the viruses. So what looks like pneumonia is not pneumonia, it is clotting of bloods within your blood vessels because these blood vessels have been attacked by the antibodies thinking that the cells there are the viruses whereas actually they only have slight protein receptor which is similar to the surface protein of the virus. In some human beings, this damage is catastrophic. We still do not know why some people are more affected than the others. Probably there is genetic predilection, probably there are environmental factors, probably there is a combination, we still don't know. But the fact remains, some are worse affected than the others. Now, if you allow this to continue, more and more of the blood vessels are clotted and you reach a stage when you need to have oxygen given externally. And the oxygen flow rate will go on increasing till you reach the level that is sufficient to maintain the brain from functioning. And that may be from 2 to 3 liters to 5, 10, 15, 60. And if at 60 liters you can still manage, then you need to go for what are known as BiPAPs and CPAPs and then ventilators. So this is a dangerous turn which you have to anticipate. Unless you anticipate this, you will not be able to control the disease. In 15 to 20 percent, you have the second phase caused not by the virus but by the autoantibodies attacking the body cells. 
recognize this in the early stage. So on the fifth, sixth day, if the patient has high fever, has bad cough and had breathlessness, think of the onset of a cytokine shower. And you have to prevent this at this stage, from the shower to become a storm, to prevent the cytokines from being released in large numbers. How do you do that? We have a mechanism, very old medicine, this is the steroid that we give either orally or parenterally and that will prevent the cytokine shower becoming a big storm and causing the devastating consequences that we are seeing. But unfortunately, steroids alone doesn't stop the clotting of blood within the lung blood vessels. So you have to combine it with an anticoagulant. So two key medicines that we have to do at this stage are the anticoagulants combined with the steroids. But remember, steroids are not to be taken lightly. Anticoagulants are not to be taken lightly. So do not do this on your own. Do it on the recommendation of a physician. Now you will ask me what is danger about steroids. Steroids, the timing becomes important. Supposing you give steroids early on. I have seen a lot of patients. Sir, we had the symptom, we started steroids. No, do not do that. Do not do it on your own. Because right from first day of your first symptom to about three or four days, the virus is still multiplying. Though it is being attacked by the antibodies, it is still multiplying. And this multiplication phase will be prolonged. Your disease will be prolonged if you start steroids early on. Do not do that mistake. You are actually harming your body by preventing the body from eliminating the viruses. Do not do that. So therefore, timing becomes critical of not starting steroids in the first five days of the disease. Once that viremia phase as it is called is over, and the antibody, autoantibody reaction is starting, that is the stage to start steroids. So, fifth, sixth day is the usual time when it happens. Recognize those who do not have any symptoms of the second stage, do not worry. Those that have, you start the steroids. Combine it with anticoagulants. Despite your steroids, you do have clotting in your veins, and that has to be prevented by anticoagulants. Lot of people think they can manage with aspirin. Please remember, it does not work. To the best of my readings that I have found, it does not work. Why? Because the infection of the virus itself, if you look at the platelet count of the blood count of these patients, they will find platelets are always low. 40,000, 30,000, some with 25,000. Does that work to prevent clotting? No, they still have clotting. Therefore, merely giving aspirin does not work. You have to give anticoagulants and these have to be continued for 3 weeks. Why 3 weeks? Why not 10 days like steroids? Because the tendency for clotting remains for about 2 to 3 weeks. Therefore, you cover up for 3 weeks. You would have managed the storm from happening, managed the worsening of the disease and most patients have a good outcome. Where is the mistake that is happening in around the world, not just India, around the world, in US, in Europe? Our normal lungs are two lungs, like we have two kidneys, we have two lungs. Okay. One kidney can be donated, you can function with one kidney. Similarly, I have patients who have tuberculosis, lung cancer, where you remove the whole lung. You can function with one lung, with 100% saturation, 100%. They do not have 93%, no, they have 100% saturation. Then what is the problem? They have problem in running. They have problem in climbing four flights of stairs. They will have breathlessness. Normal human being has two-third of the lungs as reserve capacity lung. They are designed like that. So, if you tell the patient to sit at home and wait till it starts dropping with the digital sensor, you will have damaged your lungs to more than two-third of its normal functioning ability before your saturation drops. And then you rush to the hospital, then you have to be on oxygen and invariably you go on to the ventilator. That is a catastrophic outcome. Do not wait for that. Do not sit at home with this digital sensor. It is useful. I am not saying it is not it is useful in the hospital. It is useful to decide to go to the hospital. It is useful on way to the hospital where you want to know is the patient deteriorating. All those details can be analyzed by this. But not sit at home with this. That's a big mistake. Two things that you must understand. Steroids suppress immunity so you can cause infection. So then you started the steroids on the fifth day or sixth day and you started the anticoagulants. Dramatically they become better. Oh, their fever is gone next day, their cough is better, they feel better, they are stronger. They are okay, especially in the elderly, especially the diabetics, especially those with poor immunity. By around fourth day of steroids, they start having fever again. 
oh no virus has come back it's not the virus that has come back because the immunity is suppressed the normal bacteria in our lungs they attack our body and cause pneumonia this time it is bacterial pneumonia so this phase of infection is a bacterial infection which needs to be covered with antibiotics so to re-emphasize steroids do benefit in a huge way in life saving way but it has a downside because it encourages opportunistic infection by bacteria within our lungs which are already there so this should be covered with antibiotics this is the only stage when you give antibiotic giving antibiotics when you have the first symptom it is actually encouraging bacterial resistance because no antibiotic whether it's azithromycin whether it's doxycycline contributes to anything in eliminating the virus they don't help at all so they are useless at that stage but they become useful in protecting the patient from the bacterial pneumonia that happens four five days after starting of steroids so you must remember the timing then steroids also are diabetogenic so those are pre-diabetic they become frank diabetics when they are on steroids does you know my doubt blood sugar has gone to 250 yes it's possible diabetics the sugar may go up to 400 500 be in touch with your doctor or you're a diabetologist who can control that part and unless you control that well you will have problems from the diabetes getting worse so that is a problem people with comorbidities have poorer outcome because they don't cope well with the infection that they have in the second phase or the complications of diabetes and kidney disease with fluid balance getting imbalanced because of the steroids that you give so steroids are life-saving but they are dangerous use them with caution. So the key message that I am going to give you are very clear. When you think you are positive, when you think you are positive, not when you are tested positive. Don't rely on the test positivity or negativity. If your symptoms are fitting in consultation with the doctor, you have to manage it like that. So don't go by that. Go by the first symptom. If you are asymptomatic after five days, be happy you are a corona warrior. You can watch out for another five days because you may still have a little more cough, little stiffle, stiffle body ache. These persist for some time, don't worry. But once the dangerous turn is identified, then you treat it and prevent the cytokine storm by giving steroids and anticoagulants. Steroids for 10 days and anticoagulants for 3 weeks based on consultation with your doctor to prevent complications from both these drugs. Both are dangerous drugs, need to be under supervision only. So with this understanding, of timelines first symptom first five days nothing other than maybe some vitamins to supplement yourself and nothing else what about drugs like remdesivir and ivermectin and these are special drugs there is no evidence even plasma there is no evidence that they make a difference to the outcome in any way so if you look at the various guidelines that are there they very clearly say there is insufficient evidence for the use of plasma therapy Remdesivir, tocilizumab, ivermectin or any of these drugs that are used. No role of antibiotics in the first five days. Antibiotics only in the last days of the second five day period. And once you've got that clear, you can avoid going to a hospital. You can manage at home in consultation with the doctor without having the serious consequences. Your need for hospitalization comes when you have missed the bus of recognizing the red flags of the dangerous turn of autoantibodies attacking the blood vessels. Now, with this knowledge, you can recognize it, identify it, seek help and control it. So, this is the learning which is recent and we are able to manage many patients safely guiding them through without the need for oxygenation, without the need for admission, without the need for ventilation, without the need for all the catastrophe that we are seeing. Thank you very much.